My experience has been that it's been very, very easy. Um, they were able to send me um, a letter in the post to say that James was eligible, the NDIA, and it was fairly much an easy swap. Better start ceased, NDIA started. Transitioning into the NDIS meant that I needed to fill more forms, which a lot of people would have had to have filled already for Better Start. And that is a challenge because you are constantly ticking boxes and thinking, have I done this? Is this the right box? You can send it off and wait for them to get back to you as to, or any questions, just call them. It's really, really easy. Don't be scared. That was my biggest challenge. But overcome it really, really easily by just get it done, get it sent. Don't, don't be worried that not each box is, yeah, is ticked. The best way for parents to transition is to go back to their therapist that they're currently seeing, get a report if, if possible, or use your communication books that you might have been using or any um, activities, written activities that you would have been doing with your child. Take them to your planning meeting. Write a list of all the therapies, activities, um, equipment, anything that you think that is going to benefit your child. Make a good list, take it with you. Take somebody with you to the planning meeting is even better. There's always somebody that's got another pair of ears that can hear. Look at also self-help activities where you might want to take your child somewhere and you need an extra pair of hands. Comes in really, really handy. Um, just think of your goals for your child and how independent you really want him to be, what you want to achieve. And so those therapists are helping you to do that. The advice I'd give them is not to be worried that they're going to miss out on something or they're not going to get what's entitled or, or any of that sort of stuff. Just go with what you really want for your child. Just, yeah, don't make it hard for yourself. Just be an advocate for your child. So another thing to think about when you go to your planning meeting is respite. It's really important to get um, some time out for yourself. It makes you um, a better parent and a better carer for your child because you do need to look after yourself as well. And accessing that can come through self-help activities. Um, you know, having somebody there to do an activity with James was absolutely brilliant and it meant that we could all go out together as a family and have um, an extra pair of hands and also give you that time out with either with your husband or with, with your other children, depending. For me, it was to be with my whole family together and it, it's made us a better family, yeah. So in the first year I joined NDIA, I did part self-managed and part NDIA managed. Um, and so by the time I got to the end of the year, I'd worked out that it wasn't difficult to do self-funded. So that's why the following year when I went to my planning meeting, I indicated that I would do my own plan and I would self-fund. Um, all this year has been so easy and fantastic to do. I've just had access to whatever therapies I could get a hold of. I've made his funding go further because uh, I've been able to go and get quotes for different therapists, look at different things. It, it's relatively easy and the NDIA really do help you. They will send out all the forms on how to do it, how to access the portal, how to claim. I found it much easier, much, much easier. When you're going through talking about your child, constantly filling in forms, writing down. It is really, really emotional. There's no getting out of it. It is a mental stress, it's an emotional stress. It's really important to get support. Carers Australia have a 1800 number. Don't be afraid to pick up the phone, there'll be always somebody there to help you.